thought I'd do a little video on uh, the tools I'm using to build my barn, my hand tools anyway. These are what I use every time that I'm out there working. These are the workhorses of everything I'm doing out there. So, first up, combination square. Get yourself a decent combination square. Don't go to Harbor Freight and get it. Get a decent one. You want one that's going to hold its angle. You want things accurate. Anybody could do this work as long as you have the patience to make it accurate. So that'd be one of the first tools I get in my box for this kind of work. You can check your mortise depths. You can check your tenon cheeks. They're just excellent to have. They're nice for layout, for smaller joints. That gets used a lot. Mallet. You can go buy a mallet. But why would you? If you burn firewood, all I did was I grabbed a piece of firewood, a piece of ash out of the firewood pile, lopped off the ends, drilled a hole in it, and drove a peg into it. Works great. It's perfect weight for me. And if I break it, I'm not out anything. Just a piece of firewood that could go back in the wood stove if I need it to. Angle finder. You're going to get into cutting some things that might be odd angles, like... Uh, Oh, my scarf joints, the uh, the under squints on them. Those are where the scarf joints come together and they kind of lock into each other. It keeps it from going up or down. It keeps it in a, on a straight plane. But those under squint cuts are an odd angle. So what I do, I set this up to the line and then I set my saw blade up with it. Keep in mind that this thing, even when you tighten it down, it can move a little bit. So triple check before you make that cut. So if that angle's off, oh, you're going to hate yourself when you're recutting a whole new scarf joint and you wasted the timber because you, you screwed that up. Don't ask me how I know, but I tell you I was pissed. Draw knife. <clears throat> Draw knife is an excellent tool. If you want to do your pegs by hand on a shaving horse, this guy's the way to go. Um, and I find other uses for it. And when I'm doing uh, my wall plates... I do a lot of shaving off with this. It works very well because I'm, you know, it just works great. Next up, hand saws. This is just a cheap Japanese style pole saw. Just a willow leaf saw. It's not huge. It's handy for a lot of different things. Um, you can get these really cheap. You don't have to spend a lot of money. You can buy better blades for these to replace the one you have. These blades are meant to, once they go dull, they're meant to throw away and you get a new one. Um, so I don't buy them real expensive. I'm sure as I get to using them more, I'll probably drop a little more money on them. But right now, this works for me. This is all I need. Another hand saw that you have to have. Well, it's up to you. You don't have to have anything. I'm just recommending this is what, what I use that works for me. Just a handsaw, a good sharp handsaw. Um, the saw cuts on the push stroke. The willow leaf saw cuts on the pull stroke. This works well. I mean, uh, you saw in the last video where the big circular saw, a ten and a quarter inch circular saw I was using, didn't cut all the way through on that tenon for removal. So I finished it off with this. I tell you, on a 16 inch wide beam, it takes a little while cutting with this, but it works well. If you're paying attention, it's accurate. And this saw, I bought this saw new for like 25 bucks. Is it as good as the old ones? Probably not, but it's working for what I need. And these teeth on here, I can resharpen that. Moving along. The biggest layout tool that you will use is going to be the framer square. These squares were designed for timber framers. This is two inches wide, that's an inch and a half wide. Alright, and what you're able to do with this, if you're laying out standard tenon sizes and standard mortises, you know, it's a nice, easy, quick layout tool. And if you use this every step of the way, they're going to be the same every time. Um, there's also some tables on here. I'm not an expert on these. There's an excellent excellent thread on the forestry forum uh, put up by a gentleman the name of Jim Rogers who's very smart on this stuff but you have your your standard brace layouts so say you're measuring off your uh, for a brace a corner brace or knee brace excuse me say you're doing two foot by two foot layout 
this thing actually gives you the length of the brace that you need to cut right down to the sixteenth of an inch or it works great I use this and I never knew what any of these numbers meant I mean, you have rafter tables on here there's a lot of information on here if you're going to do a timber frame and you're going to buy a framing square look for the numbers they will help you learn how to use it and it makes life really nice Moving along with layout tools just tape measure Ain't nothing fancy. I, I have a 35 footer I use a lot if I'm when I'm laying out where the walls are going when they're stood up but for the beams you're working on a good 25 foot tape measure works great. You know I like the fat maxes just because I can get the stand out on them. They're not as flimsy they don't blow off as easy. I live in a friggin wind tunnel here you know and uh, this works nice for me. Probably some of the most in Important tools that you're going to end up acquiring for your timber framing project is going to be chisels. You could spend a lot of money on chisels. These three chisels here, I've got about $400 into these three chisels. I have a one inch corner chisel. See, that's at a 90 degree angle. Well, it's offset just a little bit, but that's for cleaning out corners on your mortise pockets. I don't really use this a lot. Um, I find it kind of awkward. I just, it's not my favorite chisel, but it has its place, it has its purpose, and they're very popular with a lot of people. I prefer to use a standard chisel when I'm cleaning out corners. Keep in mind, you always got to watch for squareness. You want everything square, everything to follow where it should. You want everything as true as you can get it. Inch and a half chisel, two inch chisel. The two inch chisel, I use for everything. I don't have a framing slick, which I, I wish I did, but I don't. Um, right now it's just not in the budget and that's just the way it is. But this right here has done pretty much all of my joinery work on that barn as far as anything I need to chisel for. Um, and you saw the last video if you watched it that uh, this is the chisel that I was using to clean that tenon up with. It works very well. Keep them sharp. If you don't keep your chisels sharp, they're not worth a damn to you or anybody else. They, they really got to be sharp. I'm not happy with them unless I could shave the hair off of my arm. There's guys who, they put a mirror finish on that thing and guys out there do, do some beautiful sharpening work. But moving along with keeping your tools sharp, get a good stone. Um, get a real good stone. This is uh, a Norton stone. I can't remember the grits, but it's got a really fine grit on this side, really coarse on the other side. I'll tell you, I hardly ever use the coarse side, because if you keep up on your chisels, unless you nick it on a nail or something, and I hope you're not using them where you're going to be hitting nails, because you won't like that, keep it sharp. Maintain it. If you keep your chisel sharp, man, you are going to enjoy your life a lot more, because nothing sucks harder and having a dull chisel you're fighting all the time. It just sucks. Good hand plane. You're going to use a hand plane a lot. if you're When you're cleaning up your tenon cheeks, these come in really handy. If you're going to put your frame together and you have a uh, tenon that doesn't want to slide into the mortise, very handy to pull this out, shave a little bit off. You take little bites at a time. Keep that blade good and sharp. Keep the bottom rust free. You don't. You want that bottom good and smooth. You know, it helps so much in the way that moves across the wood. But you could pick these up at a flea market for five, six bucks. Uh, chisels. Back to chisels. You don't have to spend four hundred dollars on a set of chisels. I did because I was having trouble finding used chisels in good shape. But they're out there. You just have to have a little more patience than I do. This is one I got from my uncle. You can see it's beat to hell. Somebody used that in a bad, bad way. Terrible. You can see the hammer marks on the side there. This edge, when I got it, was completely, it was chipped right off. I'll be restoring this, putting a new handle on it. We're going to take care of that. I'll do another video on chisel restoration at some point when I get into doing this. Look around the flea market. Anywhere. You'd be amazed how cheap that you can find these things and people just don't know what they have. 
but they're wonderful. I mean, they are really wonderful. This is an old American made one. And if you see that, see that line right there? That's where they forged a piece of hard steel onto the iron. It's very, these are great. Um, can't wait to get this one restored. So that's pretty much what I use for hand tools. Um, you don't need to go out and spend a lot of money on this stuff. You can get by. You don't need all the fancy power tools. I'll do another video covering the power tools that I'm using. But you don't need a lot. You want to drill holes, you can get a bit and brace. Or brace and bit, or however anybody wants to say it. But you can do this stuff without a lot of terribly fancy tools. Um, going back to keeping your chisel sharp, I, I shot a, a picture in my first video that I learned on the forestry forum. Um, forgive me if I'm wrong, I believe it was a gentleman by the name of Dave Shepard who put it up there. But basically, you can tell this lives in the barn. We can get a good shot of this. Move some other crap out of the way here. All right, all this is, it's nothing fancy here. It's just a board with another board screwed to it. I use the Craig jig just because I, I like how it holds the screws a little better, how it holds it together. Drilled a hole, just a hole saw in the back there. All right, what you're going to do with this, you set your stone in. I like to oil my stones. And this works great. This was one of the best tricks that I've ever been shown, and I love it. Let's get your chisel on there. Just work it. And that's all. I mean, it's nothing, nothing terribly fancy about it. You find the angle that you have, and you just work it. You don't have to push down hard. You don't have to do anything real hard. It saves you from having to buy a chisel jig or anything like that, a sharpening jig for it. But just keep in mind, keep your eye on, once in a while, you want to look down check that angle. You know, and, uh, you're going to have your stone wear out unevenly, so once in a while just turn it around. And that works. You wouldn't believe how well that works. It's pretty rudimentary, but it works great for me. And it, like I said, thank you, Mr. Shepard, for sharing that. You know, it keeps a good, nice razor edge on that all the time. And it takes, it's quick. I mean, every time I go out, every time I go out to work on that, I'll spend just a couple minutes touching that chisel up. Nothing worse than a dull chisel. Dull chisels suck. That's the best advice I could give you, is dull chisels suck. So in the next video, I'm going to be covering out, laying out floor joist pockets. And I'm also going to be showing you how I cut a mortise for my wall post into the bottom of my tie beams. So stay tuned. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, please like and subscribe. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one.